Hey there, bike people. Welcome to Cyclecraft TV. I'm Brendan Poe, one of the owners of the Cyclecraft Cycling Center, located on Route 46 in Parsippany, New Jersey, and all around the world at cyclecraft.com. In our last episode of the Vast A1 project build, I decided that I was going to make an interim setup for my new Vast uh, bike because I wanted to be able to ride this bike over the winter. A lot of the parts that I wanted aren't going to be available until uh, mid to late spring, possibly even into the summer. So I decided what I would do is take some components off of my old gravel bike, I had that Von Hoff ACX, and I'm going to install them onto the new A1 all-road frame. Uh, bearing in mind that there may be some changes to this over the course of the year uh, and based on the feedback I get from my viewers because I don't know if I'm putting together the ultimate does everything bike build. But for the meantime, I needed a bike that I could use over the winter as my road training bike. I don't want to bring my Parley out in the salty weather. Uh, and again, trying to see if one bike can rule them all, this is what the project is all about. So let's talk about the parts I was able to salvage. It's not as many as I thought it would be, unfortunately, because there are definitely some other considerations. What I did salvage from my original uh, gravel bike, rear shifter and brake, front brake lever and caliper. I have my uh, Force 1x11 uh, rear derailleur. 11 speed cassette. I think that's a 10 to 44 that I had on there. I was able to salvage my 11 speed chain. This Thompson stem from uh, up front, actually it was from another bike, and my uh, trusty WTB Silverado saddle. And a real quick note on saddles. This WTB Silverado saddle in the 142 width just works out to be the saddle that I like on virtually every bike I have. It's, just, it's the saddle I've used on every bike I've had for the past five or six years. Um, my recommendation is if you find a saddle that you like, buy three or four of them and put them in a closet somewhere because at some point they're going to stop making it and then you have to start the process of finding a new saddle all over again. All right, so on to the new parts that I had to get. Now the first consideration that I wanted to talk about was the wheel set. So the wheels that I had on my original gravel bike was a Zip 404 uh, 700C wheel set. Not a slouchy wheel set by any stretch of the imagination. Very lightweight, nice wheels. But what, one of the things I wanted for the winter was the 650B wheel set because I can use a much wider tire. It's a lot floatier, you get a much cushier ride. Uh, and I don't really care about how fast I'm going under any circumstances, uh, but um, that seemed like a, a good way to go. So the first choice that I made for myself, and I made this on my own without input from the uh, hive mind, because you guys are supposed to be helping me build this bike, uh, but what I decided to go for in the meantime was this Reynolds ATR 650 wheel. ATR stands for All Terrain Road. Uh, the reason I like this wheel, it's carbon, it's very lightweight. The price is not insane for this quality of a wheel. Uh, the Reynolds wheel set uh, comes in around 15 or $1,600, has a lifetime warranty on it. Uh, I feel pretty confident that I'm gonna be happy with those wheels. Uh, so that was the wheel set that I got for the bike. Now the second consideration obviously on your wheel set is what tires you're gonna run. Uh, I actually had about five different tires that I was looking at for this build, uh, for my, my interim build for use over the winter. What I did wind up choosing was this Challenge Gravel Grinder 650B uh, 46 millimeter tire. Now the reason I ultimately chose this is because it's only 420 grams per tire. Uh, compared to the next closest tire that I was looking at was the WTB Byway, which was coming in at about 551 grams uh, per tire. So this is clearly a lot lighter weight. Uh, I expect that it will you know, roll a lot nicer. Now again, Speed is not necessarily the ultimate concern here, but one of my original parameters was to make the bike as light as possible, but without getting nuts on spending, you know, bazillions of dollars on trying to get it there. This is actually a nice way to go. Uh, in this 650 by uh, 46, 420 grams per tire, I really like it from that aspect. It also has a really nice uh, center file tread, kind of like a cyclocross file tread tire with a little bit of a side knob on there. Uh, so these should hold up pretty well over the winter. From a durability standpoint, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I like the volume of the tire. I think it's gonna set up really nicely with these Reynolds uh, wheels. The second big consideration that I have on this bike was what crank set I was gonna use. I could have used my old 11 speed uh, crank set, but going into uh, the winter, I wanted to make sure that I had a power meter on this bike because I am on a training program right now. Uh, I have some goal events for 2022 that I wanted to do, and I wanna use a power meter for my training program. Uh, so my old crank set was not compatible with the uh, uh, power meter that I was going to use, uh, which is the uh, SRAM, well SRAM makes it now, it's the Quark Axis 4-bolt uh, uh, 
chain ring spider with the power meter built in. It's compatible with the eight, eight bolt style cranks that SRAM is now making. Uh, so in order to use that power meter, I had to pick up a new crank set as well. This is the Force Carbon Fiber uh, Dub Spindle Crank Set. Uh, it's about the same weight as the crank set that I was taking off of there, but I got this specifically so it would be compatible with the power meter. The final piece of the crank set obviously is gonna be the chain ring. Uh, in this particular instance, I'm using this Force uh, 42 tooth X sync chain ring, so this will hold on to the chain nicely. Uh, it's that four bolt pattern that works with the power meter. And ultimately, this is going to be a nice setup because I'll be able to interchange chain rings on this. So if I decide that I need a lower gear ratio to use the bike off road, because keep in mind, one of the parameters is, is I need to be able to do a single track ride on this bike. Uh, and I will offer proof of that at some point over the summer. I'm going to ride this bike in a single track. Uh, but this uh, 42 tooth chain ring is perfect for what I want to do over the winter but I want the versatility of being able to switch it out for, you know, say a 38 or a 40 tooth chain ring. So that's uh, the chain ring for the bike. Naturally, uh, if you're going to be using a different bottom bracket uh, standard or a different spindle, you have to have the appropriate bottom bracket that goes with it. Now on my old bike, I had a, uh, the Force crank set that I had was a GPX standard spindle. Uh, so I had to get a T47 bottom bracket that accommodated the dub spindle. So new bottom bracket as well. Uh, so that's a fair amount of new parts. Um, the other uh, aspect of the bike that is important to consider is the cockpit of the bike. Uh, in this case, I chose this really nice carbon fiber whiskey uh, handlebar. Whiskey is a small uh, component manufacturer. Uh, they have uh, a lot of nice carbon parts. The reason I picked this bar is that uh, it's a 42 centimeter wide bar, so that matches my, my build. Uh, it's a 24 degree flare. Now there's a lot of different uh, specs on gravel bars out in the world. So, you know, typically a road bike does not have any flare. Cyclocross bikes, you know, they would be five to 10 degree flare. Gravel bikes are now anywhere from 24 to, you know, to 50 to, you know, they look like seagull wings when you get them on the bike. So the reason I like this one, it's enough flare to give me some control over the front end of the bike in a sketchy situation but it's not so wide that if I'm using this bike in a road ride with some other people on road bikes, I'm not gonna be hooking up bars with other people. So this is really a good, uh, a good solution for that as well. It's also really lightweight and I'm anticipating that it also, also should be a fairly comfortable uh, riding bar as well. Uh, the last component that I needed to uh, mention was my seat post. Now the seat post that I had on my old uh, Von Hoff, I could have used that. It fits into the vast A1 frame set, no problem, but Quite honestly, it's kind of a boat anchor. Uh, I did have uh, the ability to get myself this Zip Service Course SL seat post in the Beyond Black finish, which is pretty nice. Uh, it's much lighter weight than the post that I had on there, but it's not a stupid amount of money. Uh, it's a, you know, it's kind of like right in between. Really nice price for the weight. Uh, the finish is really nice, so I'm. Pretty, uh, pretty excited to have that on there. So that rounds out my build. The only other piece I'll have to pick out once I'm done is some handlebar tape. Uh, that's a small item. Uh, I'm ready to start building this bike. So come on along on the journey with me. We're gonna put this bike together and we'll see how it comes out. That's it. All the parts have been installed on the interim build for the Vast A1 project bike. I used some of the parts from my old ACX gravel bike, and I added some new parts that should ultimately wind up on my finished project bike. But I'm gonna really enjoy riding this bike over the winter. I've got my power meter installed. I'll be able to continue on with my training program. That's it for this episode, and please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Also consider subscribing to Cyclecraft TV to see all of our future content. That's it for me. See you next time on Cyclecraft TV. And don't forget, keep that rubber side down.